Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video I would like to talk about this camera right here, it's the Canon EOS M50. More specifically I would like to talk about its photography side of things because usually people talk about it from the video content creator type of um, field whereas I have been using this camera also extensively for photography both for professional work and paid work and more specifically into like event photography, photographing like different type of events including like bank opening day, well open banking day, sorry, um, conferences and, you know, in other challenging type of photography as well where, you know, you need decisiveness and you are working with challenging lights in general because, for example, conferences, there's really harsh, um, dim uh, lights that you're working with throughout the hall and everything and you need to capture that moment of people clapping, people's expression, also the talent on the stage and people giving out certain awards and things like that or introducing certain important people so you really have to be decisive and you have to work with the camera very very well in those challenging type of situations and um, for personal use I also use it for like portraits, travel, I do travel photography with this camera so many times and to be honest most of the time the camera didn't really let me down and in this video it's not a review video but I would like to talk about the operational side of this camera as well as the image quality side of this camera but first let's talk about the operational side of this camera this camera has actually has very few buttons but most of the buttons are very very important and crucial buttons so um, thanks god they uh, actually leave all the crucial buttons uh, as dedicated buttons and um, quite a few of these buttons are actually even customizable apart from this one um, multi-function button that you can uh, customize to other things you can custom some of these buttons to suit your own personal liking and how you like the camera to handle personally I set the buttons to the way how my full frame 5D Mark III kind of operates so I have the button layout as much as like as close as possible to my DSLR so I can just move with my fingers um, even though unlike my DSLRs I'm not constantly looking through my viewfinder but yeah it's still nice to be able to set those buttons to whatever I used to what I'm used to on operating with my DSLRs um, I also like this um, articulating screen. I know a lot of people talk about it, but it's, al it's also very, very important, in, even in photography, to get different perspectives. And if you don't want to kneel down too low because of certain um, conditions with the floor or whatever, you still can use this articulating screen and it actually helps me to also grab nice shots from shooting above because I still can see the screen and um, it's nice. And as you might notice, I actually also got a second one here because I love it so much, but mainly I use them for video if I'm using dual setup because usually this just comes along with my DSLR as like my second or my third camera because I use like two 5Ds and yeah, usually this comes as like my backup cameras to those. But there were times when I couldn't change lenses and this camera just had the right the right lens on there that I decided to just shoot with this camera and also stick with the camera sometimes for the rest of the event or the rest of that time. Um, and um, other thing about the operation side of this camera is uh, the viewfinder. I don't really use the viewfinder. It is usable. That being said, it is like it is probably like 10%, no, maybe more like 5% more saturated colors that you're seeing through the viewfinder compared to the final image that you're getting on the backs of the screen and also on the computer. So that is something like I, I already got used to, but in the first like few weeks, it was kind of annoying um, seeing that the color was a little bit more saturated than what I was getting. Of course, in post, I, I'm, a, I'm one of those people who just boost the, uh, saturation up by maybe 10 or 20 percent but um, you know it's something you get used to and if you're definitely working for paid clients you're definitely gonna edit them anyway or at least do some minor adjustments and convert from raw to JPEG because I usually shoot raw on this camera and yeah that's not really that much of an issue and the screen brightness back here on the LCD is actually bright enough at least for northern European summer uh, I'm able to see the screen fine with very minimal reflection, but maybe that's got to do with something how I personally use the camera. Some people complain about it being too reflective. I personally find it just fine, at least for the um, environment that I live, which is in Northern Europe, Germany, Netherlands, things like that. 
Um, another part is, I don't get it, the EOS M10, um, there's a card reader on here, and there's a separate battery compartment. But on the EOS M50, um, they both share the same card slot, which even on this small tripod plate, you can see that this doesn't open on like all the way. So if you're working in video, which I usually do, you will have a much bigger tripod plate, which blocks it completely. At least with this, I still can change the card, but I cannot change the battery. For that, I have to put this out. And yeah, that, that's kind of annoying. Um, what I like from Canon is that they still, uh, they didn't cripple their USB ports, which is something I love um, using their softwares. Um, yeah, if you're the type who doesn't, who don't use Canon softwares, then you might not find this as a con, but I really love using Canon softwares like the EOS utility to control the camera and to um, enable other features and to also transfer image profiles, like custom image profiles or flat image profiles for my movie projects. I can just do it with this USB port and I'm actually thankful that they don't cripple that because that means I can just have the same profile as my 5D Mark III camera in here and shoot in a very similar quality. And yeah, that's something I really like. One thing I wish they would have done similar to the ATD, though this camera is not an ATD, I'm aware, is the um, mic port. I was about to say headphone jack, but the mic port. Um, this is more into the video, but uh, it's about the operational and the ergonomic side of the camera, so I think I can just say that. Is that I wish the port was just a little bit more forward, but I understand that they don't really have the room. That being is because when I rotate the screen, sometimes it just hits the, uh, the mic when it's um, plugged in here. And sometimes I use this as my travel camera. That means I'm using it for both travel vlog and photography. So in terms of photography, it does get in the way if I want to switch the screen to my photography um, type of screen. Because for vlogging, I can just use it like this, but then if I switch back to photo, I obviously have to switch the screen back and um, use it in different perspective to take pictures. So yeah, that's that. Um, their hot shoe is fine. I don't mind the flash sync speed of this camera so much because it's not a high-end professional camera and I find that the sync speed um, with the flash is actually external strobes. It's actually fine. But what I wish is that they would actually have the lock for this flash rather than, you know, puppy puppy flash like this using your finger. Uh, it's just, I don't know, sometimes I find it a bit flimsy. If I'm using this camera by its own, it's fine. But if I have other cameras that I carry with me, sometimes it's, it just pops up and it's kind of weird to use it like that. And then sometimes I don't realize that it's up and I want to get uh, quick shots. And then obviously if you put this up, it automatically enables the flash and the flash fires and you get a different image res result. And sometimes if you're doing street photography when you're traveling, that might not really work to your favor that much. But yeah, that's about it. Um, oh, one thing, even though this camera is not uh, advertises weather sealed due to the fact that I actually put this out in the rain the entire night by accident of course before filming um, it actually survived um, at first I, I totally forgot about the fact that I left this camera outside in the rain um, for the entire night the next morning I woke up my colleague quickly ran out inside the, uh, the place where we were staying and he took the camera back and even when the camera was back inside after an hour um, the screen itself was still dripping water I was using this camera for all the other, like the rest of the shots and b-rolls that I had to get at the time, but um, this camera actually managed to work again. Um, at first this dial was, well, not working for like half a day, but then on the second half of the day it came back to life again. So the water did do some effect to um, the camera, but it didn't break at the end of the day, which is something I, I'm thankful of, which reminds me not reminds me, but leads me to the ergon like the build quality again, even though it feels very plasticky compared to the M5. But um, it certainly built very well, and you can definitely take it into some serious, well, not serious, but like some weather condition that is not really friendly for the camera. And actually, ever since that um, event, I've been using this camera in the rain actually quite often to film. Um, but yeah. Because usually for my photography job, uh, I don't really have to deal a lot with the 
um, challenging climates because I'm usually inside the conference room or the event room or the disco room, things like that using this camera. But yeah. And um, next is, you might have noticed I have this camera mounted with the uh, adapter and due to the autofocusing system of this camera, how good it is actually, uh, it's able to actually drive the uh, autofocusing system in the lenses really nicely. I don't really have third-party lenses, I usually use native lenses from Canon, uh, whether it's the um, native M or the native EF and EFS lenses. So I haven't experienced such autofocus problems yet, as much as I'm experiencing with my Panasonic system, but that's a whole different story. But in terms of when I'm taking pictures of events photography and things like that, even using it with my 85 1.2, which is kind of like a brutal test for this camera or work for this camera, it actually managed just fine. Using my 85 1.2, even though it has to travel a lot on the focus ring, but it managed to get most of my shots in focus. Usually the shots that aren't in focus are usually the ones that I'm actually, it's my fault that I was shaking my hand so much using such a tele um, photo lens, 85, because you have to times it by 1.6 because of the sensor size, and also the fact that it's very front heavy if you use that type of lens. Um, so yeah, so the autofocusing system on this camera is actually quite good, and I like the fact that you can just tap anywhere on the screen to focus and you can adjust the size of your autofocusing point. Um, that means um, even though sometimes the subject in the area of the focusing points is smaller than the autofocusing points, I like that you can adjust the autofocusing points to be a bit smaller so that you can focus really tech sharp on that um, small detail, which is very, very nice. And um, I like the fact that they also, like, well at least, um, for me, that I can enable, like, enable grid, different types of grid, and also overlay the electronic um, level on there. And it will stay there for <laughs> pretty much until I turn it off. And also it will stay there in video, at least on my particular copy. And that's actually pretty nice. And now that the video is getting a bit long, let me go into the image quality. The image quality, I find it to be actually very nice and reliable and the files are really nice when shooting in RAW because often I'm shooting in low light and it's nice to have the RAW files that you can tweak or clean up the noise later. And also the resolution is actually not bad. What I find out, not really find out, but like what I discovered was even though a lot of people said it's kind of like the same image quality that you get from the ATD, I find it to be false because especially shooting um, in areas where there is really, really um, a lot of shadows and really um, strong highlights because recovering the shadows from those areas is very, very soft on this camera, whereas on the ATD, it's actually better than my 5D Mark III. So in terms of if you're recovering a lot in the shadows, uh, in the image that has really high highlights as well, um, so there's a big contrast difference, um, then this camera is definitely not as good as the ATD. But I don't own the ATD, I only have used it before, so I don't know how it performs in other fields compared with this camera. But I can say for sure that the images from the ATD is slightly sharper, slightly cleaner, and um, a lot better, like really a lot better when recovering shadows with the ATD compared to this camera. So if you're thinking that this camera is gonna be the same as the ATD, depending on what you shoot, that's totally a wrong thing to think about because it's not for my test. And um, yeah, but otherwise the image quality is very nice. You get that can uh, Canon color science, though it has been tweaked, I think, quite a, quite a bit because it's definitely not the same type of color science you get from their Stami professional body like the 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, and um, so on. So yeah, there's a, definitely the color difference, but you still get that Canon look if you're looking for the Canon look from photography and from the video standpoint. And that has been a little short video of me talking about this camera on the photography side of things of this camera. I didn't want to make it too long, but I still want to um, explain some of my thoughts and um, this camera has been a really really nice camera the operational wise this camera is really nice this camera is actually a really really small tiny camera um, so it definitely fits anywhere in your bag and even compare this to my Fuji system I am able to mount lighter lenses due to the um, shorter flange distance on this camera 
that makes smaller lenses more portable and even their zoom lenses. Um, this is not the best example, but I have another zoom lens that's also around the same size, but all of their zoom lenses seems to have this lock. So once you don't really use it anymore, you can just collapse it and then it becomes even more portable. Um, there are so many times when I just mount this camera with my 22mm f2 from Canon STM EFM, the native glass on this, and then just put it in my um, coat pocket and then just go out like that. It really is a small camera and for that reason you are able to capture more images because of the size. Because it's not heavy, because it's small, that means it's portable, you're more likely to actually take the camera out. To shoot and on the other hand one thing I don't I haven't talked about is the Wi-Fi feature um, despite being able to control everything with the live view and shoot and gives you completely new perspective and new opportunity to shoot different types of images especially if you're traveling this is very useful so you can just set your camera up somewhere let's say you're traveling to the beach you can just set this up camera on low ground on the sand and lay a lot of food on the on the beach and then a lot of birds will come and then you can get that perspective of the birds surrounding your camera and um yeah otherwise you wouldn't be able to get if you were just there with the camera because the birds are going to be aware of it and um but another thing that you can do with the uh, uh wireless transfer is while well, transferring the image but the images are nicely converted even if you're shooting in raw what i find with my fuji cameras is that i cannot transfer raw files to my phone it or and it doesn't even convert from raw to jpeg when transferred to my phone so that being said if i'm transferring the pictures from my phone uh, from my ca camera to my phone it automatically transfer uh, like converted to jpeg and then i can add it it really easily with my Lightroom mobile and that is something really nice and it's very intuitive it's really easy to use and they even have their own um, cloud uh, storage where you can just store your photos up in their cloud system and it will also be there if you forgot to bring your you know backup memory card or also if your phone memory is full you can just you know store it up there and that's just really really nice otherwise you can use this camera as full manual for your professional work as well. You can set up this camera for wireless um, trigger shooting. You can set up the camera for your studio work. It's very nice. The autofocusing system is really reliable unlike Micro Four Thirds um, autofocusing system, unless if you're comparing to the high end, which on the Panasonic side, even their high end most of the time is not even as accurate as this. It might be faster, but it's definitely not as accurate. That's why I'm also getting rid of my um, Micro Four Thirds system, actually. But this video is getting a bit too long. I hope you find this video somewhat useful. If you need a free photography guidebook, I have it on my website. The link will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have fun shooting. Bye.